uh, last week we talked about the uh, the table plan at a wedding reception uh, and I said that slightly tongue in cheek uh, that where you are on the table plan uh, tells you where you are in the pecking order. Uh, are you on the top table? And at the all age, I've got a top table there ready. Are you at the top table? Are you quite near the top table? Or are you at the back uh, by the fire extinguisher and the kitchen kitchen door? Um, the, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, once a tiny baby in Bethlehem, uh, once walking on the same soil you can walk on if you go to Israel, uh, crucified, dead and buried, but then he rose... Uh, where is he today? Today is Sunday the 18th of March. Uh, where is he eight- today, 18th of March 2018? Well, he is at the right hand of God the Father. If we had a top table there, as we will do later, he is seated on the top table. Uh, Colossians, I've been loving Colossians over these last few weeks. Uh, Paul has been telling us some amazing things. Uh, I guess as Christians, many of us would say we have seen the loveliness of the Lord Jesus uh, and we have seen our unloveliness. Uh, I guess most of us here have cried to him for forgiveness. We have cried to him, be my Lord or something like that. And the father then has adopted us into his family. Uh, and Paul, Paul now says, well, you are now in Christ. And that's both supernatural and it's real. And the illustration I've been using over the last few weeks for in Christ, if Christ is an envelope and we're a bit of paper, uh, we are in him and his spirit is in us. We've become we've become one. Uh, So we asked the question last week, uh, if, if, if Christ is up there on the top table, where are you in the pecking order of the universe? Uh, Are you quite near the top table? Are you at the back? Are you outside in the foyer? And we discovered last week, no, if you are in Christ, you're in him. You're with him. Uh, You are on the top table with him. That's your status. That is your position. Uh, And so the very practical question then arises, and we started to look at this last week, well, how do I live as one who is on the top table? as one who is on the holy and majestic and awesome king of the universe's table. How do I live? And you can see my three headings, and it sort of gives the game away instantly. Uh, royal clothes, just like, the, like Christ Jesus, not giving up on people, just like Christ Jesus, living with the peace of Christ, the message of Christ, the joy of Christ, living everything for Christ. So let's look at that in detail. Uh, First of all, royal clothes, just like Christ Jesus. Verse 2, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved. I wonder if you believe that about yourself. Uh, You know, you sometimes uh, go somewhere with people you don't know and and you sort of think, well, I fit in here. Uh, Will the people there like me Uh, or will it be uh, awkward? Uh, A few weeks ago, I went to uh, Justin Welby's house for supper, along with a couple of hundred others. Uh, and, and the place was just dripping with bishops and other people who are terribly important. And I, and I felt like a fish out of water, <laughs> you know. And I walked into this crowded room and to my relief, I saw one of my friends at the other side of the room standing there looking equally uncomfortable. And I saw her sort of beckoning, so come, 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 stand, come stand here, come and talk to me. Now, if I'm feeling like a fish out of water at a mere, mere human being's supper party... What am I going to feel like in the presence of God himself? But completely unexpectedly, verse 2, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved. Isn't that extraordinary? Uh, The Archbishop of Canterbury, he doesn't know me. I'm just a name on a list and his secretary uh, pressed a button on their computer, which churned out email invites. The Archbishop of Canterbury doesn't know me, but the God of the universe 
says to people one by one, I choose you. That word holy means set apart. I'm going to set you apart. I'm going to love you, which I take to mean I'm going to put you before my own comfort. I think that's what love means. Putting someone else before yourself, that's loving, isn't it? I'm always so impressed when I go to uh, nursing homes, particularly where there are people with, with completely addled brains, and they still get visitors. Isn't that surprising? So they've got somewhere, a husband or a daughter or a friend, who puts themselves out and gets absolutely nothing in return. They're not even recognised. So that person puts the person they love before their own comfort. I think that's extraordinary. And the God of the universe says to you, I'm going to put you before my own comfort. And of course, 2,000 years ago on a cross, he indeed put you before his own comfort in the most explicit way. Uh, What is our God like? Uh, Our Lord Jesus Christ, if you were to sum him up, would it be fair to say that the Lord Jesus Christ is compassionate and he's kind and he's humble and he's gentle and he's patient? That is Jesus, isn't it? Uh, And amazingly, we're joined to him. He's in us, we're in him, we're on the top table with him. So how now do we live... Royal clothes, just like Christ Jesus. Verse 2, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Uh, Celebrations. Uh, The best celebrations, of course, come in red tubs. And there's Mars bars and Milky Ways and bounties and galaxies and Maltesers. Um, I wonder what your favourite is. Uh, I will do this later at the 10.30. You need to stay. I will do this at the later at 10.30. Uh, um, what's your favourite? Which would you choose? What would you like to be given? Boost. Pardon? Boost. Boosts are good. Boosts are good. Boosts are good. They pull my fillings out, but boosts are good. But even more important than chocolate, if there is anything more than chocolate, even more important than chocolate, which, which of these gifts would you like God to give you? Compassion? Kindness? Humility, gentleness, patience, which do you most want? And the fabulous thing of being on the top table is we get the lot. God says to us, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. Uh, You can be like my son, he says. What What is stopping us putting on these clothes? Last week we saw the joy of taking the the dirty rags of sexual immorality and inappropriate speech off. Uh, How privileged we are. We are now free to put on compassion and kindness and humility and gentleness and patience. This is living on the top table. We'll close just like Christ Jesus. Uh, Secondly, not giving up on people just like Christ Jesus. Verse 2, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Uh, My guess is that you've done some pretty unforgivable things. Uh, Last week someone said to Sarah... Uh, I don't deserve to come to chapel because I've killed someone. What what, what, what would you say if someone said that to you? What would you say if someone said to you, uh, I don't deserve to come to your church because I'm a murderer, uh, because I'm a rapist, because I'm a paedophile, because I'm a terrorist? I said to Sarah, what did you say? (laughs) And she said, I don't deserve to come to chapel either. That's the gospel, isn't it? That is why the gospel is so radically wonderful, because it doesn't dodge, it doesn't brush under the carpet, it doesn't airbrush out what we've done or who we are. We are, we are, as the prayer book says, we are miserable sinners. Uh, The Lord Jesus Christ, um, we think, don't we, we think we chose him. But most of us, upon reflection, have concluded, no, he chose us, he chased us, he pursued us. Uh, Here's the point. The Lord Jesus Christ didn't give up on me. 
despite the fact that I'm utterly undeserving of his compassion, his kindness, his humility, his gentleness, his patience. So as a forgiven sinner, someone who is now on the top table, how am I now to live not giving up on people just like the Lord Jesus? Verse 13, bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. How do you react when someone irritates you, hurts you, manipulates you, shuns you, uses you, abuses you, talks about you? And sure, forgiveness and restored relationship will always require their repentance, but do we even want that? Am I prepared to offer that? Am I prepared to chase someone for that? Let me just tell you two very hard stories. They're completely made up, but you're going to say, no, they're not made up. They're very true stories. Uh, Little Albert comes back from school. He's been hit by Billy. What does Dad say? Dad says, hit him back hard. What does Mum say? Mum says, keep away from him. But Little Albert is a follower of the Lord Jesus, and he knows that both his parents on this point are wrong. Just as when someone in our church family is horrible to us, is horrible to you and your strong inclination is to get them back, how will you do that? Well, you will humiliate them. You will talk about them behind their back. You will trash them. You will tell everyone what they've done. Trashing someone is quite therapeutic, isn't it? But then you think to yourself, okay, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep my distance from them. I'm going to keep away from them. I'm going to annoy them. I'm going to avoid them. I'm going to, I'm going to give up on them. But then we remember that we're on the top table, not because we deserve it, but because A, the Lord Jesus did not get us back. He didn't punish us as we deserve. But crucially, and this is where we struggle, I think, he didn't distance himself from us either. He didn't ignore us. He didn't keep away from us. He didn't give up on us. Astonishingly, he did everything needed to bring us into a restored relationship with him at great cost to himself. Verse 13, bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgive you. I don't deserve to be the minister of this church. I don't even deserve to be in this church. And the Bible tells me neither do you either. But I've been forgiven by my compassionate, my kind, my humble, my gentle, my patient God. And his love compels me to bear with, to forgive anyone I have a grievance against. To forgive as the Lord has forgiven me. Am I willing to do that? Well, his love for me gives me that willingness. Uh, Life on the top table, royal clothes, just like the Lord Jesus. Not giving up on people, just like the Lord Jesus. And my third heading, I'm sorry, this isn't a snappy heading at all. Living with the peace of Christ, the message of Christ, the joy of Christ, living everything for Christ. Uh, And you can see where I got that from, verse 15. Uh, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all the wisdom through psalms, hymns and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Uh, Different sports have different terms for the people who make it happen. Uh, so Wimbledon, they've got an umpire. Uh, Twickenham yesterday, Cardiff Arms, they have a referee. Uh, Utoxeter races, they have stewards. The Olympic Games, they have judges. And those people, the umpire, the referee, the judges, the stewards, they, 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 they preside over the game. And they dish out the prizes afterwards. 
Uh, And the reason I say that is that that word there, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, that word rule is an athletic term taken from the Greek games. And so what Paul is saying, um, not the Olympic games, not the Greek games, no, the whole of your life, let it be presided over, let it be watched over, let it be dictated by, let it be controlled by the peace of Christ. And if that sounds a bit mushy and sentimental, no, this is not mushy and sentimental, because the opposite of peace is, is war. Uh, we are coming up to the 100th anniversary, 11th of November 1918. Uh, the French general, Marshal Foch, signed the armistice that ended the First World War. 18 million deaths, 23 million wounded. There was nothing mushy and sentimental about that peace, Tracy. Uh, And when Christ Jesus died on a cross 2,000 years ago and won for you peace with God, there was nothing mushy and sentimental about that peace treaty, or to use Bible language, that peace covenant. Uh, I'm God's friend, I'm God's ally, I'm God's adopted child, my sin is wiped out, I am no longer his enemy. And so Paul says, "Your, your whole life, let it be presided over, let it be watched over, let it be dictated by, let it be controlled by the peace that Christ won for you. Verse 16, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Why do I need to be taught and admonished? Why is it good to sing? Because I need to be reminded. Because I need to grow in wisdom. A a, a plea for our people here at Hanford, let's encourage people not to find something better to do on a Sunday morning. Living with the peace of Christ, the message of Christ, the joy of Christ. Uh, We've already spotted this over the last few weeks. Um, A mature Christian is a thankful Christian, which means a joyful Christian. Am I grateful or am I ungrateful for what God has done for me? Am I joyful or am I indifferent? Uh, You give me something, Uh, you do something for me, and I don't say thank you. You I know that's plain rude, but what else does it mean? Well, it could mean that I'm not bothered about what you gave me. I don't need it, I didn't want it, I could easily have got it for myself. Or it could also mean that I'm not bothered about you. Perhaps I think it's your job to give me things. Perhaps I think I'm above you. We say thank you, don't we, because we value someone. We say thank you because we value what they have given to us. In fact, you've spotted this, I know, when we really value someone, when we really value a gift, we can't stop saying thank you. The Lord Jesus Christ, what has he given you? Well, there's that small matter of giving him, giving you life himself. (laughs) But he's given you eternal life. And if you were to, if I say to you, okay, write down a list, you'd you'd run out of paper. (laughs) Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. What does your Christian life look like? How does God the Father intend your Christian life to look like? Royal clothes, just like the Lord Jesus. Not giving up on people, just like the Lord Jesus. Living with the peace of Christ, the message of Christ, the joy of Christ, living, living everything for Christ. Amen.